Hello everyone. Today we'll talk about closure. What is a closure? To simply put, a closure is a function without name. Let's look at an example. Here we have a function less than, which returns if the first parameter is less than the second parameter. And if I assign this function to a variable called c1 and then call c123, it will return true because 2 is less than 3. Now let's do the same thing with closure. Here we have c2 equal to this thing. This is a function that does the exact same thing as less than function. The only difference is this function doesn't have a name. A function without name, we call it a closure. And we assign this closure to c2 and then call c223, it also returns true. So this is how a closure works. Now since a closure is doing exactly the same thing as the function, what's the benefit of a closure? Let's look at another example. Here we have an array of integers, and we want to sort the array in ascending order. Swift has a function called sort, which takes the array as the first parameter and a function as the second parameter. This sort function will sort the array by using the second function to decide who comes first and who comes next. So by calling sort array less than, the array is sorted in ascending order. But we have a little inconvenience here. The less than function is defined somewhere else. It could be defined in another file, it could be defined in another library. So to figure out what this function does, we need to jump to that function, fix things out, and then jump back. So it would be nice if we have everything in one place, so I don't have to jump around. That's exactly the thing that we can achieve with the closure. Here we are doing the same thing with the closure. So instead of using a function, we are using this piece of closure. And again, the array is sorted in ascending order. But now we have everything in one place, so you can immediately figure out what is going on. This is especially beneficial if this piece of code is only used in one place, so that we can save the hassle of defining a function somewhere else. So the code is more manageable. Now we have achieved our goal with the closure. But this piece of code doesn't look very clean. There are lots of noise. Is there any way to make the code more concise? Swift provides a couple of ways to simplify the code. First of all, Swift does a very good job of type inferring. And we already know that this array is an array of integer, and A and B are items that are taken from the array, so we can infer their type to be integer. And by looking at the return statement, we can infer that return type is a bool. So by removing the type annotation, we can simplify the code to this. And because this function is so simple, we can compress it into one line. So we have this. Now it's much simpler. Can we do more? And since this function is so simple, there's no benefit of declaring some local variables here. We can just use the default parameter name that's provided by Swift. And the default parameter names are dollar followed by the parameter index. So dollar zero is the first parameter, dollar one is the second parameter, so on and so forth. Now our code is much simpler than the original one. Now the closure is the last parameter of the sort function. This is called a trailing closure. For Swift, a trailing closure can be moved to outside of the function. In other words, the parentheses can be moved to over here. Now we have something like this. Sort array dollar zero less than dollar one. Lastly, the operator less than can also be thought of as a function or a closure, which means we can now do something like this. Sort array less than. This is as simple as it can be, and it also does the job of sorting the array in ascending order. And if I change the less than to bigger than, 
it will sort the array in a descending order. The book gives a, a definition of the closure like this. The closures are self-contained blocks of functionalities that can be passed around and used in your code. By this definition, a function is also a closure. So a function is a closure that has a name. A closure is a function that doesn't have name. Here is another example of using the closure. The map function will map every item in the array to something else. And in the closure, we define it maps a number to a string. And the string is formatted like this with the number. So by looking at the result, we can see every number is mapped to a string. Another big advantage of closure is it can capture values from its surroundings. For example, here we are using the map function again, but we are using it with a different closure. In this closure, we are formatting a string with a variable x. And x is a variable defined outside of the closure. So the closure has captured x from its context. And not only that, the closure can even change the value of x. This is called variable capture. It is not something that you can easily do with a function. For function, if you want to capture something from its context, you have to explicitly pass in this data through parameters. So the idea of being able to capture a bunch of variables from its context is a very powerful technique. There's one thing that you need to watch out. When you capture a variable from its surrounding, you need to know the difference between reference capture and the value capture. For example, here we have an i equal to 25, and then we define a closure that print out i. So i is captured by the closure. And then i is changed to 35. When we call the closure of c, what will be printed out? The old value of 25 or the new value of 35? It turns out it will print out the new value of 35. So here when we capture the variable i, we are capturing i by reference. When i change, we get the new value of i. However, sometimes this may not be what you want. Sometimes you only want to capture the current value of i and don't want to change the behavior when i changes in the future. For that, you need to capture the variable by its value. You can do it like this. This is a capture list. It specifies the variables that the closure will capture by value. And now i is captured by value. And when we call c, we print out the old value of 25. The capture list should always appear first in the closure. Here is another example of closure that use capture list. So as you see, capture list appears first. Now let's go through the example provided by the book. We have a function called make incrementer. And this function takes one integer parameter called amount. And it returns a function with this signature. In the body, we have a variable called running total, which is initialized to zero. And then we define a nested function called incrementer. What this function does is it accumulate amount to the running total and then return the running total. And in the end, the incrementer function is returned by the function. So how does this function work? We call the function make incrementer with amount equal to 10. So this will return a function. And we assign this function to a variable called inc1. And then we call the function of inc1. It will return 10. Because inc1 is an incremental function, and it returns a running total. Running total was initialized to 0, and then incremented by the value of amount. So the running total is 10 over here. Then we call inc1 again. Running total become 20. Inc1 a third time, 
running total becomes 30. Now we create another incrementer by calling this function uh, again and assign the result to inc2. And then we call inc2 and the running total becomes 10 again. This is because inc1 has its running total and inc2 has its own running total. So as you see, both inc1 and inc2 has captured their own version of the running total to themselves. Another way to look at it is by comparing to object-oriented programming. With object-oriented programming, we are creating a bunch of data objects which contain functions or methods. With closure, we are doing the opposite. We are creating a bunch of functions that contain data. For example, here we are creating a bunch of incrementers which contain an internal variable that records the state of the function. Another thing to note is that both inc1 and inc2 are constants, which means you cannot assign a different function to them. However, the running total is a variable inside of the function, so the running total can be changed. This also indicates that a function is a reference type. It is not a value type like the array or dictionary. That's all for now. Feel free to subscribe to my channel and see you next time.